हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज टेंथ ऑफ नवंबर एंड वेलकम टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन तो गाइज इन द टुडे इज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एंटायर आर हिंदू न्यूज पेपर वी विल बी टेकिंग द आर्टिकल्स विल डू इट्स डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस एंड द आर्टिकल्स अलॉन्ग विद द वे फॉरवर्ड विल ऑल्सो बी टेकन अप एंड इफ यू आर न्यू हेयर आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड दीज सिनोप्टिक नोट्स वेयर वी हैव गिवन द नोट्स ऑफ ऑल द आर्टिकल्स दैट हैव कम इन द टुडे इज न्यूज पेपर फाइन यू कैन फॉलो दीज नोट्स एंड इन द लास्ट अ मेन्स प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन हैज ऑल्सो बीन गिवन You can download these now notes from the Telegram channel. The link for the Telegram channel has been given in the description box in YouTube. Moreover, you can visit the Telegram and can search their channel by typing "Thinking Pallet" by Sahil, and there you'll get these notes. Now, before starting up, first of all, let's take the overview of the entire newspaper so that we can understand the placement of the articles in the newspaper and which articles are important, which articles are not that much important from the exam point of view. So, the first article: Kerala government moves to. Kerala government moves to divest the governor of the chancellor's role. We'll see this article what it is coming. Okay, Republicans make gains in U.S. midterm polls. So the U.S. midterm polls or the elections going on the other countries, fine, fine. They are only important if some direct implication on India's interest will be there. Otherwise, you don't need to go too much into the detail. Then, guys, further moving on, Center devises new guideline for the TV channel. So we'll see that what these guidelines are. Then uh, the advertisements, etc. In the regional section uh, basically the regional issues and advertisements tenders fine they have been given not very much important for the examination moreover if you are having some different edition of the hindu newspaper your regional section will be different okay so uh, uh, most of the times the things are not that much very important then moving on directly will reach to the editorial page on the editorial the first article ews judgment we'll see this article because recently supreme court has given the judgment policing with the talent so we'll see the article with respect to the police reforms that are needed okay considering consent so this article is talking about the recent issue where uh, the recent issue where the karnataka high court has provided this particular thing that the age of consent which is right now 18 years need to be revised many because many a times it leads to the injustice age of consent means the age Uh, at at which a person can give the consent to involve in the sexual intercourse so today if a person is of 17 years age and even if that person gives the consent that consent will not be counted and that sexual intercourse will be called as rape now many a number of times tribals are getting married before the age of 18 and they are involving in sexual intercourse many a times the boys and the girls who are teenagers they involve they don't even know about this law so it needs to be revised and guys this particular issue we have discussed a lot lot in detail in the past two days also needless needling the article is talking about the controversy between the tamil nadu government and tamil nadu governor so we'll see this article also then enforcing the ban on the two finger test so recently it has been a uh, supreme court judgment has come we'll see this particular article the governor versus the government now this particular article guys it is talking about the kerala controversy but i'll take that article separately as well the high number of promotions so the article is talking about the poverty gap the uh, sorry the knowledge gap that is increasing in india we'll see the article then coming to the text and the context in the hopes for a clue uh, clear blue sky a clear blue sky so guys this particular article is showing the maps that how over the years fine 2000 2005 2010 15 2022 okay so the air quality pm 2.5 numbers etc has been provided now understand this particular thing over the years the the absolute quantity of pm 2.5 etc as it has been given here not important for the examination so i'll not suggest to go in this particular article too much because the academic aspect is uh, is not that much there then on climate action books that tell us what is happening what can be done so guys actually in this article the plot of the books is being told okay the plot of the books is being told that it has provided that uh, uh, that particular summary now the article i have read it but for the examination some uh, distinct points or some distinct content is not there just the plots is being discussed and the plot is also being told in very generalist sense then moving on dy chandrachud take charge as the 50th chief justice of india so justice dy chandrachud okay has now succeeded the justice yu yu lalit okay and has become the 50th cgi okay he will be continuing till 2024 that is nearly 2 years fine uh, one thing i want to tell you that guys up till now we did not had any women cgi in india justice bv nagaratna might be the women, first women cgi okay Uh, but she'll be appointed somewhere around 27. 
okay however in this particular article uh, you the personal profile of the judge is being given you don't need to go in that particular thing okay so we just need to understand this particular thing that the senior most judge into the supreme court is appointed as the cgi and it is a precedent that is being followed and one more thing uh, see as this thing has happened there will be the multiple videos on the youtube that will be coming which will be giving you the entire profile of the cgi not important for exam don't no need to go there then the political issues etc have been given okay uh, embarrassing urgent demonetize uh, embarrassing to urgent demonetization case says constitution bench of supreme court okay so basically demonetization case the rationale of the demonetization case whether it was good or not so it has been urgent then the political articles etc have been given then pashmina shawls we'll see this article but it is talking about levels of the groundwater so recently a report has been released we'll see that thing now republicans fight to retake house control of senate too early so the politic internal political issues internal political issues have been discussed okay within the us no need to go there then guys after that moving on china sees opportunities and risk from dividend us okay now all the articles which have been here these are just the political commentaries etc that are going on see think uh, see understand this particular thing when we talk about the ir international relation you don't need to track every day what statements what comments are being made you need to understand that only those issues are important where some academic aspect some foreign policy dimension or indian interest is discussed okay so do no need to go and waste time in this then the business page rupee settled trade equitable for exports obligation perks okay so we see this particular thing we see this particular thing that <coughs> exporting benefits and incentives have been given okay and now uh, basically the exports imports imbalance it is getting settled out then the corporate trends etc have been given now these corporate trends sensex where it is going where, where the rupee is right now standing in front of dollar every day no need to track corporate tracks corporate profits not important and then we have the sports page so this is guys the overview of the entire newspaper and uh, um, again i'll tell you that the only objective of carrying this overview is to give you a skill that you should a be able to identify the newspaper if few days after you don't want to see this video you should be having that particular skill okay so for that thing this overview is given now let's take the first article uh, the first uh, Uh, article which actually it is a gs quotation now this quotation is given in order to complement your answers you can use it in your answers so today we'll take the quotation from the ancient greek philosopher that is socrates so socrates he says that once a man knows good from evil nothing on earth can compel him to act against that knowledge okay so this particular quotation first of all can be used in the ethics gs paper number 4 there is just little bit concept i want to give you socrates had given the theory of moral intellectualism he had given the theory of moral intellectualism in which the socrates provide this thing that people do bad because they don't know good so therefore teaching people good teaching people the knowledge of virtues will make them ethical so this is the same thing that the socrates have said here he said that once a man will know the good from evil once he'll realize the good okay nothing can stop him than being good fine so very impactful quotation please do note it down and use in the gs paper number 4 ethics now taking up the first article so the first article actually we have clubbed two articles the first article is from the page number 1 kerala government moves to divest governor of the chancellor role then the other article we have taken from the editorial page and actually there is one more third article that came on the opinion page though it was a very politicized article but some important inputs from there also have been taken and now collectively we'll see that what is happening here okay now by the way yesterday also we have taken one article where we discussed the issue of government versus governor controversy that is going on okay now this particular article what is the utility for exam this article will be important for the gs paper number 2 issues of polity gs paper number 2 issues of polity as well as within the gs paper number 2 federal issues federal issues now why it comes under the federal issue because when we talk about the governor governor has been called as the agent of the center government and when the state governments are there state governments are there if within the states the governor who is the agent of center is appointed and if governor versus government controversy comes it in a way becomes a kind of a controversy between the two levels of the government so therefore it becomes a federal issue 
ओके आई होप दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द यूटिलिटी नाउ बिफोर गोइंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल गाइज लेट्स टेक सम ऑफ द बेसिक इन्फॉर्मेशन सम बैकग्राउंड सम ऑफ द वैल्यू एडिशन दैट विल हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल गाइज सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द इंडियन फेडरलिज्म Indian federalism. Indian federalism has been called in the past as a cooperative federalism. It has been called as cooperative federalism. Sometimes it has been called as the collaborative federalism. Sometimes it's called as the bargaining federalism. And all these types of federalism points that there is an inherent cooperation between the center and the state at all the times. But nowadays there is a new word that is becoming very popular. That is confrontational federalism. confrontational federalism sometimes it's also called as the frictional federalism frictional federalism now both of these provides the irritants that are emerging between the center and the state and when these irritants are emerging many a times the irritants are emerging on the pretext of the government versus governor relation government versus governor relations now you see this particular thing the controversy is going on from so many of the days in the state of kerala as well as in the state of tamil nadu so what's the latest thing that has happened so basically uh, recently guys i told you recently guys i told you that there are the two developments that happened development number 1 the kerala governor the kerala just a minute development number 1 the kerala governor recently said this particular thing that any minister if they will speak against the office of the governor then the governor will withdraw the pleasure from that office okay now it is very clearly provided within the article number 163 of the indian constitution that a minister or the chief minister the chief minister will continue in the office till the time that the pleasure of the governor is there and governor said that i will withdraw the pleasure it means that government is saying that they will be suspended okay one thing but after that there is article 164 comes Article one sixty four very clearly provides that governor has to act on the aid and advice given by the council of minister. Okay, now a without a aid and advice the governor cannot act. And this particular thing has also been provided by the Supreme Court into the Shamsher Singh case. Supreme Court said you cannot act. So the question comes that how then the government is issuing these particular kind of a things that I will withdraw the pleasure because he cannot do this thing if the Chief Minister and the Council of Ministers doesn't advise this. This is one thing. It has been said that governor is going out of its constitutional mandate. Number one. Number two issue that comes here is that guys, governor recently asked the vice chancellors of the multiple universities that you have to resign, you leave your positions. Fine. Now the vice chancellor had given one logic also. Vice chancellor had said that recently the Supreme Court, okay, vice chancellor, what the vice vice chancellor had said that recently Supreme Court. Had provided this particular thing into the matter of the VC of APG Technological University, Doctor APG. Okay, Doctor APG Kalam Technological U University. In this case, Supreme Court provided that the VCs have been appointed onto the basis of the search committee. Now, this search committee is not constituted as per the regulations of the UGC. So, all the VCs who have been appointed on the basis of such search committee, they cannot hold the office. So, what governor did? Governor issued the warnings to multiple VCs across the state, and they had said that you should resign that particular thing. Now, recently, it has been provided that right now the resignation will not take place. Okay, so that has happened. now guys because of this particular thing the kerala government seems irritated from the governor and the kerala government has asked the governor that you should pass an order saying this particular thing that the governor will not be the vice uh, governor will not be the chancellor of the university now guys as of present time governor is the chancellor over the university that is the ex officio position that the governor holds it means just by the virtue that a person is governor the govern that person will become the chancellor over the universities and governor being the chancellor is asking the vice chancellors that you re you resign etc so therefore now what has happened let me erase this 
तो नाउ वट हैज हैपन केरला गवर्नमेंट केरला गवर्नमेंट हैज नाउ डिसाइडेड टू रिमूव द गवर्नर एज अ चांसलर ऑफ द स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटीज ओके एंड हैज सेट दैट इन द गवर्नर प्लेस रिनाउंड एकेडमिशियन एक्सपर्ट्स विल बी मेड एज द चांसलर ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी now the state government has requested the governor himself that governor should promulgate an ordinance which will remove him from the position fine and if government government us uh, or sorry if the governor will not do that particular thing then the government had said that they will they will then be bringing a bill in the state assembly and from that bill they will remove the governor from the position of the chancellor now the kerala government has taken the reference of the mm M. punchi commission okay some people call it punchi commission some people call it as punchi commission okay so they have said that they have taken the reference from the punchi commission which was constituted in 2007 and studied the center state relations and punchi commission very clearly provided this thing that governors should not be made as the chancellors they should not be given the powers of the chancellor because it will bring the friction between the governor and the government so they have said that such thing or not happen and now the government is saying that they are just following the recommendations of the punchi commission and they are removing him from all types of governances there okay in the university matters now this is one thing that is happening then guys the second matter that comes is the neighbor of the kerala that is the tamil nadu now what the, in tamil nadu is happening so guys recently the M, uh, recently the tamil nadu has moved a memorandum that has slammed the governor's functioning okay so the governor of the tamil nadu he has been criticized that that, that he just want to circumvent the elected government of the tamil nadu they said this particular thing that governor is openly governor is openly contradicting tamil nadu government's policy actually government is the elected one okay so they he is contravening with their policies nearly 20 bills that have been passed by the state assembly they are pending governor is not clearing them the bills are being just passed to the president okay the delay is being caused specifically the neat exemption bill okay so the neat exemption bill tamil nadu wanted that the neat will not be mandatory for the tamil nadu even in this particular matter the up till now the bill has not been cleared so the 20 bills are pending for such a long time moreover the tamil nadu has also said this thing that needlessly ne uh, uh, sorry yes the the tamil nadu government has also provided this thing that governor is also commenting on to the matters such as the matters of governance sanatan dharma dravidian heritage tamil pride okay thirukural fine uh, thirukural a tamil classical work has commented on all these kind of a things fine now guys actually when we talk about the three language formula okay uh, three language formula the language issues they are very sensitive kind of issues into the southern india now what has happened the present governor of the tamil nadu is a very strong advocate is a very strong advocate of the three language formula now when we talk about the three language formula guys actually i'll just tell you in a brief what this three language formula was all about so basically in 1968 India came out with the first national education policy and in this particular policy three language formula was proposed now this formula was something like this that the schools into the north india they will teach three languages that is the hindi second is the english and one language one other language of india preferably preferably the language from the southern part of india okay and for the southern indian state it was provided that into the schools they should uh, teach the english then they teach hindi and then they can teach any regional language or their mother tongue this was pro provided now this three language formula in 1968 was criticized by the leaders into the southern india because they said that if you see hindi hindi has been a common language <clears throat> that is being uh, provided that it should be taught okay and guys in 1960s there at that point of time the controversy in official language was also going on okay so there were the proposals that only the hindi will stay the official language however finally it got resolved and we got official languages both hindi and english but at that point of time the controversy on that matter was also going on so suspicion mistrust was very high okay and it was said that this three language formula it is nothing but the hindi genization hindi genization hindi is being imposed this was the apprehension that was there however guys actually what happened this three language formula did not got implemented as it was meant why because in the north india is the north india the states the states they started teaching hindi english and rather than the language from south india they started to teach sanskrit 
and south india they just went for two language formula that is the english and one of the regional language or the mother tongue but since then the three language formula has been little bit controversial and often it evokes some emotional um, there there are the sensitivities that are associated okay even in 2020 national education policy that came three language formula was retaliated at that point of a time also the leaders from the southern part of the india they said that this is not such a good thing that is being carried and the governor right now is an open advocate of three language formula he has talked about the dravidian heritage and many such kind of a things which often becomes little bit sensitive issues so this is the government in tamil nadu is saying that it's not required it's a needless thing but at the same time at the same time guys understand we live in a democracy in a democracy set up fine every constitutional authority be the governor also they have that they can uh, they they have this particular thing that they can put forward their views though their views should be in line with the constitutional spirit that is one particular kind of a thing okay but the needless provocation should be avoided and it is on both the sides even the government should not see every decision of governor that it is pitted against the government and governor should also not be interfering or micromanaging the government too much because government at the end of the day is directly elected by the government so there is a mutual respect there is a mutual understanding that is needed between the office of the government between the office of the governor and between the government and only this particular kind of a thing can resolve this particular controversy so this is guys about all these particular matters so understand this thing that we have not just taken the matter mentioned in the article because it is just a fact but rather we had tried to holistically cover this entire dimension as it is coming out okay so that is all about this particular article and now let's move to the next article okay so the next article it is also taken from the page number 1 and the article talks about the, the center devices new guidelines for tv channels broadcast of socially relevant topics compulsory okay so basically we'll see with it with respect to the gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 <clears throat> governance and within the governance governance over the media governance over the media fine now Uh, first of all let's see that what has happened so government recently had come out with the okay one thing is that guys that when i gave you the synoptic notes in the synoptic notes many number of times i don't use directly the headline that is given in the article why because many times the heading in the article it doesn't convey as much of a sense so sometimes what i do i just give a simplified heading so that you can understand that what the article is talking about okay so i hope you understand so what has come guys recently recently the guidelines for uplinking and downlinking of tv channels in india 2022 has come okay so the 2022 guidelines for uplinking and downlinking of tv channels has come now first of all first of all what is the meaning of this uplinking and downlinking okay uplinking and downlinking so when a signal when a signal is sent from the satellite to ground it is called as downlink and when a signal is sent from ground to satellite it is called as uplink okay so guys today you see the tv okay you see the tv cable dish fine so actually what is happening fine suppose now here there is a satellite here there is a satellite and here there is a tv and a viewer is watching this particular tv so let's say that the viewer is watching the serial kasural simarka okay sasural simarka so the viewer is watching this particular serial now first of all this particular video will be will be uplinked to the satellite okay and then the satellite will downlink this particular serial to all the people who are watching it right now so there is an uplinking and then there is a uplinking and then there is a downlinking this is the fine now what has happened what has happened government has come out with the apply, uplink downlink new guidelines and under this particular guideline it has provided this particular thing that all the stations all the channels fine which are using the satellite uplink and downlink they have to broadcast the content on the issues of national importance and content of the social relevance for at least 30 minutes every day only those channels will be exempted from this which are either the foreign channels or the channels where it's not possible to broadcast such kind of a content for example a sports channel okay for example on sports channel there is a cricket match is going on fine now between the cricket match you cannot come out with these kind of a broadcast fine so number 1 number 1 what has happened all the channels for at least 30 minutes for at least 30 minutes they have to broadcast the social content 
Now, the government has given a justification that actually the air waves, air frequencies which are being used for the broadcast of the TV serials etc. They are the public property and are needed to be used into the best interest of the society. So therefore, they have provided that onto the eight listed themes, the uh, eight listed themes, the broadcasts or the shows are to be made every day. Now, what are these eight categories? Number one, education and spread of literacy. Number two, agriculture and rural development. Three, health and family welfare. Then there is a science and technology, welfare of women, welfare of weaker section of society, protection of environment and of cultural heritage and then the national integration. So these are the eight categories of the topics on which every day serials are to be broadcasted. Fine. So you will see these serials and after that doesn't matter. You go and watch the Game of Thrones. You go, you watch the Mirzapur, any series. Okay. So these eight broadcasts have to be made. Okay. Then now the next thing that the article is talking about is that certain kind of channels are exempted. For example, uh, the channels which are related to sports fine or the foreign channels they might not show this particular thing okay now what has happened these new uplink downlink guidelines that had come they will replace the 2011 guidelines that were there is it clear further these particular guidelines have also talked about certain other things for example uh, it has been provided that these new guidelines find ease compliances for the television channel. Now see this particular thing, earlier there were many of the compliances that were to be taken. For example, if you want to go for a live broadcast, fine, that live broadcast cannot be, if you go for a live broadcast, that live broadcast has to take a permission from the government. Now those permissions are needed, not need to be, to be taken. Moreover, many other compliances, status reports were to be filed. Now they don't need to be done. So the ease of compliance has been brought. Second. Uh, I told you no prior permission for live telecast. Indian teleports may uplink foreign channels. Okay, so the Indian broadcasters might uplink. So I told you when a video is broadcasted to satellite and then satellite will be downlinking. Now this uplink can be provided by the Indian broadcasters. Okay, we can uplink foreign channels and it has been provided that as Indian broadcasters can uplink the foreign channels, India might become a teleport hub for the countries. Now you see this thing. We find by the ISRO by the ISRO. We are launching many of the satellites of the foreign countries. Okay, So India aspires to become a kind of a global hub for the satellite launches. So in the teleport also we are seeking to become a global hub. Okay, So this is guys all about this particular new rules that have come. I hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article. EWS judgment and the shadow of Pandora. EWS judgment and the shadow of Pandora. Now this particular article We'll see with respect to the GS paper number two, issues of polity within uh, the polity. There is a social justice also that is given in the GS paper number two, social justice. Fine, within the social justice, affirmative actions, affirmative actions. Okay. Now guys, when we talk about the affirmative action, affirmative action is an umbrella term which includes all those actions where government is trying to bring the equity. Government is trying to bring the equity. So within the affirmative action, reservations will come. Giving a particular preferential treatment to a particular section, it will come. Fine. Affirmative actions are also called as the positive discriminations. Okay. Now, so recently what has happened, <coughs> Supreme Court's EWS judgment has come. Okay. Now, little bit of a background, though we have discussed this particular article in much detail, but still I'll tell you a little bit of a background. So actually guys, what happened? What happened? Fine. So in 2019, just a minute. So in 2019, there was the 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act that was passed. Now this 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act provided that the 10% reservation will be given to the economically weaker section. Now the economically weaker section will be those people whose household income is 8 lakh rupees per annum. Income clause was there and then there was the property clause. Property clause contains the property, agricultural land, residential property that you are having. So 10% reservation was given. Now guys before it already we were giving the reservation to scheduled caste, scheduled tribe people and the OBC people and they were given the reservation like this. Scheduled caste were given 15% reservation, ST were given 7.5%. 5% reservation, OBCs were given 27% reservation, in total 49.5% reservation was being given. Now actually there is a kind of a, there is a kind of a dictum, a rule that has been 
that is being followed since the Indra Sahani judgment of 1992. Even before that also, this particular dictum has been popular in many countries. Indra Sahani judgment, Indra Sahani judgment of 1992 provided that maximum reservation should not be more than 50 percent because if it will be, if it will be more than 50 percent, then it will lead to discrimination against the unreserved categories. So therefore, we restricted our reservation till 49.5 percent. But when the 10 percent reservation to EWS was also given, what happened? Reservation increased to 59.5 percent. So it was a challenge that can we breach the 50% limit challenge was made number one. Number two guys the challenge that was there is that in this in this newly introduced 10% limit in this newly introduced 10% limit the existing OBCs, STs and SCs will not be included. So therefore it was said that as they are not being included fine it is a kind of a violation of right to equality. It is a violation of the right to equality. Then third fundamental issue that came is that up till now the reservations were given on the basis of the social backwardness social backwardness and here the ews reservation is based on to the economic backwardness so understand this particular thing earlier the reservation was based on to the caste now the reservation has come on to the basis of class so can we bring the class as a new category yes no so for that particular thing also the challenge was made okay so these are the major challenges that were made on to the 103rd constitutional amendment act the matter reached to the supreme court and now the supreme court supreme court has given the judgment and in the judgment fine the three uh, it was a five judge bench now the fine the two judge bench they are called as a constitutional bench uh, two judge bench they are called as a division bench five judge bench they are called as the constitutional bench it was a constitutional bench having the five judges fine there can be that seven judge bench nine but judge bench eleven they can also be there now they have provided by three by two majority that is the three judges they had said that 10 percent additional reservation that has been given it is correct they have upheld that particular thing they said that it is correct Okay, now the court has given many reasonings in this particular direction. So we will be analyzing this particular judgment fine in this particular article. Now the co court has provided this thing that the injustice in the country has existed historically. Okay, scheduled caste people fine they were discriminated they were not allowed to go to school. So injustice has existed. But now we also need now uh, basically the historical injustice cannot be the sole determinant of backwardness. We also need to bring new parameters and new yardsticks. It has been provided that Hindu society, Hindu society has recognized backwardness associated with the caste. But now new practices are also to be brought. So here it has been provided that we need to move away. We need to move away from caste centric definition of backwardness. Okay. It is provided that it is provided that the class can also be a factor. So caste is upper caste lower caste class is class of have and have not so poor versus rich this can also be a new criteria for determining the backwardness okay so that today class has become identifiable that is something that is being provided now guys the article talks about this particular thing that the that social backwardness is a distinct concept that emerges from the multiple circumstances that is the social, cultural, economic, educational, political. So by these particular factors, the backwardness exists. So multiple factors are there. Not only the caste is a factor. So now we need to move away from this particular caste as a factor and new factors are needed to be provided. Okay, just fine. So the new factors are to be provided in this particular direction. Okay, guys, uh, I think there is some issue there. Okay, are you able to see me? Okay, is the video uh, visible? Fine. Yes, so it is being provided that actually the new factors are now needed. Now it has been provided that basically up till now up till now we have given the reservations in our country okay and these reservations are mean to remove the discrimination that has been there okay now we find this particular thing that actually many other communities are also finding fighting for the backwardness for example minas gujars fine they are saying that they are more backward okay backwardness has been recognized but they are fighting for the more backwardness okay so actually the judgment the judgment see this particular thing is good 
जजमेंट इज गुड बिकॉज इट हैज रिकॉग्नाइज द अदर फैक्टर्स ऑफ बैकवर्डनेस ऑल्सो बट वाई यू हैव रिकॉग्नाइज जस्ट द इकोनॉमिक फैक्टर ऑफ बैकवर्डनेस अदर फैक्टर ऑफ बैकवर्डनेस कैन ऑल्सो भी देयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल द ट्रांसजेंडर कम्युनिटीज ट्रांसजेंडर कम्युनिटीज आर ऑल्सो फेसिंग अ पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ अ बैकवर्डनेस इज इट क्लियर और नॉट सो देर फॉर इट हैज बीन प्रोवाइडेड दैट वी नीड टू कम आउट विद अ मैट्रिक्स fine or and multiple factors which will which will actually make our reservation process more objective which will make reservation process more more encompassing so this is something that has come okay so guys the article is just giving a kind of a a, a kind of a assessment of the judgment that has come now moving on enforcing the ban on the two finger test now this particular article will see with respect to the gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 social justice within the social justice issues related to women we'll see this particular article now actually guys we have seen this particular issue last week also what has happened supreme court has come out with a judgment and in this judgment supreme court has provided that the two finger test cannot be carried and all the medical practitioners who are doing the two finger test they will be charged of misconduct they will be charged of misconduct now let's understand with the back basics that what this two finger test was and why the supreme court had said like this okay so basically when we talk about uh, guys the two finger test two finger test it is a medical examination which is done on to the women who have been raped so in this examination a medical practitioner will be inserting the two fingers in the vagina of the women who has been raped and it will be ascertained that whether the women was sexually active or not now this particular test is actually based on one notion the notion is this that if women was sexually active earlier then she might have given the consent now this notion is very old very regressive very very uh, basically this particular uh, notion is very old and very regressive now this particular thing guys actually has been taken earlier by the supreme court also what happened what happened supreme court had given a, a judgment in 2013 the name of the judgment was lilu versus state of haryana and in that particular judgment supreme court provided that the two finger test violates the right of the rape survivors fine why because it has been provided that fine see this particular thing suppose a woman was sexually active and she had carried a sexual intercourse 10 times 15 times 20 times whatever the times it is there it can be the case that she was active but the present case where the rape has happened she had not given the consent earlier what is the history how it is relevant it is not relevant in any case so therefore the two finger test that was being done where the sexual active uh, where the women was sexually active or not it was being seen it is illogical now the supreme court recently what has provided it has been provided that this test has no scientific basis it neither proves nor disapproves the allegation of rape it doesn't helps in any way in investigation rather rather it revictimizes retraumatizes the women who have been sexually assaulted so therefore this two finger test is should not be there moreover guys in 2013 where the lilu versus state of haryana judgment came after that an amendment was also carried in the section 53a section 53a of the indian evidence act and by this particular amendment it was provided that the evidence of a victim's character or her previous sexual experience with any person shall not be relevant to the issue of consent or to the quality of consent into the prosecution of the sexual offense very clear provided that the that the uh, it was provided that the victim's character fine is no uh, victim's character and ascertaining the character by this is immaterial now understand that after this 2013 amendment and judgment fine there was the detailed uh, guidelines also that were fight that are that were issued by the ministry of health and family welfare and these particular guidelines provided this particular thing that health providers in the case of the sexual violence cannot carry the two finger test so two finger test was banned by 2014 guideline okay that is something that had happened and now again in 2022 supreme court had said that though it has been banned way back in 2013 but still the medical practitioners are carrying this two finger test so they had repeated this thing that if you do that thing you will be charged of the misconduct okay that is something that has been provided moreover the court has also provided this particular thing that these guidelines is to be circulated to the private and the government hospitals because many a times these doctors also don't know that such kind of a thing has happened 
okay now understand let's do little bit of a analysis of this particular issue okay so analysis goes like this that actually actually the doctor's medical opinion has a important uh, has an important weight onto the criminal case okay now understand this particular thing if in the two finger test is done by the doctor and doctor says that the woman was habituated to sex okay now that particular thing might make the case weak now the doctor prepares a report and many things the doctor provides that whether there was the resistance or not okay whether there was the resistance or not and all such kind of a things okay so this particular thing might play a very important role in the case in, in that case it might weaken up the case now the supreme court has provided that the detailed workshops must be conducted okay workshops must be conducted where doctors need to be made aware of such kind of a thing now as of today when we talk about it guys there is actually no institutional platform to share the supreme court judgments with the medical practitioners Today when we talk about it, actually there are the forensic science laboratories, forensic science laboratories. Now you see this thing, whenever there is a case, case of a murder, case of a rape, etc. There are the forensic science labs. Now these forensic science labs, they have the doctors, okay. And these forensic science labs, at the same time, they are in talks with the police also, okay. Now these forensic science labs, they work under the home department of the states. And the, these forensic science labs, they also get the fund for the modernizations, fine, from the home department of the state governments. Now, the point is that we need to, we need to spread this information to these forensic science labs, which are having the doctors. But as of now, there is no mechanism as how to share this particular information with the forensic science labs. So, therefore, this particular kind of a initiative is to be built, okay. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that that understand this particular thing today though today though there is the continuous interaction between the police department and the forensic science labs but even today the health department's relevance in the investigation of offense fine it has been undermined see this particular thing doctors will be giving their judgments at many times for example when there is a rape doctor's view is important unnatural death there the med medical examination is important age determination there the medical examination is important so for the criminal just criminal investigation medical examination is important and they are reached from time to time but the health departments are not are, are, are not the part of the criminal justice or the criminal investigation system fine that is something that is happening Health department is not the pillar of the interoperable criminal justice system. Fine, we have recently, we uh, from past few years, we are working on to the crime and criminal tracking and network system. Now, CCTNS is a system which will connect all the police stations. The police stations are connected, but the health department is not connected with them. So, this is something that is provided. After that, the training, it is a neglected area in most of the department. Training in the policing training in the doctors who are working into the forensic science labs it is not there now after every five years there should be a refresher course which tells the, uh, the these officers that what are the changes that had come what are the supreme court judgments that had come and how now the new parameters are to be adopted so these training etc is not there so it might be possible it might be possible that still this two finger test will be continued in some of the remote areas because this information will not reach with the doctors so this is guys all the issue that has come in this particular direction so that is all about it and now we'll move to the next article policing with talent policing with talent resource sharing not squabbling not squabbling now this particular article we'll see with respect to the gs paper number two criminal justice system reforms criminal justice system reforms and within the criminal justice system reforms police reforms police reforms we'll see this particular article okay now so recently uh, we have taken this particular thing also <coughs> that ministry of home affairs ministry of home affairs had convened the conference that is the delhi conference fine with the <clears throat> with the you uh, with the state home ministers and the police chiefs so different different state home ministers different different police chiefs from the different different states were called and this meet was organized 
Now, this particular meet wanted to ascertain the internal security challenges that India is facing, how the policing can respond to this internal security challenges. And if you remember, in this particular meet, the Prime Minister also made an address and provided that we need to have one nation, one police uniform also. So, this meet we have discussed a few days back. So, this particular meet was, was carried. And this meet was aimed at improving the quality of the policing in India. Okay, now guys, in this particular uh, article, there is a case study of the Tamil Nadu police that has been given. So, you might be knowing this thing that recently a car blast was carried into the Coimbatore. Fine, now basically it, what happened? The crime happened, police collected all the document, police collected all the document, all the evidences, UAP, Unlawful Activity Prevention Act charge was invoked and then that particular matter was given to the NIA, National Investigation Agency. Now, this is something which has been appreciated by some people and this is something which has been criticized by some people. Some people had said that, okay, this is a professionalism of the Tamil Nadu police that when they found this particular thing that the nature of the crime which has happened, this bomb blast might be a part of a bigger conspiracy, it might be a part of a terrorism conspiracy, they did not waste time and gave the matter to NIA. But at the same time, some people have criticized, they said that it took a lot of time, they wasted a lot of time. This is something that has happened. Now, actually guys, the article it is talking about this thing, that when we talk about the policing in India, you see this particular thing, first of all, police, first of all, police, it is mentioned into the state subject in the schedule 7 of the Indian constitution. So, therefore, there are the state, there will be the state who will be dealing into the matters of the police that is provided. Now, actually guys, when we talk about the India got independence at that point of a time, the first home minister of India, that is the Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Okay, so Sardar Vallabhai Patel was a very visionary leader and he basically provided this particular thing that the, uh, he, he, he provided this particular thing that the states and the center need to have a cooperation into the matters of the policing. Okay, but he he would he, he actually he would have feel very bad if he would have seen in his times that how the politics in the center state relation is going on and even into the policing the center state relation politics over powers okay now if you remember guys into the past we have taken seen many cases where the police for example the police of the delhi okay they have reached to the punjab and they have arrested one person okay so it when we talk about the punjab so punjab had the different government delhi police comes under the ministry of home affairs find the union ministry of home affairs so basically there are spats there are the controversies there are the conflicts between the center and the state governments the polices also sardar patel would never have liked this particular thing and guys understand this particular thing sardar patel in order to bring the professionalism into the policing also insisted that we should have the indian police service which will work alongside with the ias so indian police service was also created now when we talk about the ips these are the officers which are recruited by the UPSC, which is a center level body and these officers are then designated at the state levels. Now, actually what is happening, the IPS officers, they are the common to the center as well as the state. So, in a way, they are actually trying to bring a kind of a, uh, they are trying to bring a kind of a standardization also. Okay, so the 75 years have happened since independence. And we have seen this particular thing that in order to, uh, in order to, in order to deal with the diversity, in order to deal with the size of the country, we need to have an objective policing. We need to have some smart, trained policing, very professional policing. That is something that is there. And in this, in this, the IPS officers, IPS officers are playing that particular role that they are bringing the professionalism into the policing. Okay. However, from time to time, there are some issues also that also come. Now, the article is talking about this. Let's see. Though the poli on the policing also, there are the differences between the state and the center. But many number of times, center and the state have collaborated also in a very good manner on the matter of policing. For example, there is a central reserve police force, CRPF. There is a BSF, border security force, ITBP, Indo-Tibetan border police. CISF is there, Central Industrial Security Force. Now, all them, BSF, CISF, IDBP, they have worked in tandem. They have worked in absolute cooperation with the state governments. 
एंड दीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सी आर पी एफ बी एस एफ सी ये सब दे आर अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट यूनियन गवर्नमेंट एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सर्विस इन द स्टेट बट बोथ ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है वर्क वेल सो इट शोज दैट देयर इज अ पोटेंशियल दैट दे कैन वर्क इफेक्टिवली ओके नाउ इट हैज बीन प्रोवाइडेड दैट एक्चुअली दो पुलिस इज अ स्टेट सब्जेक्ट बट इट डजेंट मीन्स दैट द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट और द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स विल नॉट हैव एनी से इन द पुलिसिंग दे विल हैव द से इन द पुलिसिंग एंड एक्चुअली देयर से बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एट सम टाइम सो एक्चुअली देर आर द थ्री areas where the ministry of home affairs can provide a valuable assistance now the training and technology are the two areas where the center does greatly contribute okay so center has more financial power it has more physical resources and can contribute into the tech upgradation of the policing so here the center can help the state fine second is that सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल नेशनल पुलिस एकेडमी इट इज़ इन द हैदराबाद इट इज़ अ वर्ल्ड क्लास इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर ट्रेनिंग द पुलिसिंग एंड फॉर द प्रोफेशनल एक्सेलेंस इन द पुलिस एंड दिस फैसिलिटी हैज़ बीन जनरसली अवेलेबल टू द स्टेट पुलिस फोर्सेज ऑल्सो सो हेयर द फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज ऑल्सो बीन प्रोवाइडेड बाई द सेंटर देन देर आर द पेटी स्क्वाबल्स दैट आर देयर पेटी स्क्वाबल्स आर देयर ओके इफ दे विल इंक्रीज इफ दे विल बी गिवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंस देन दे विल इफेक्ट द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द एनफोर्समेंट एजेंसीज टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू अ काइंड ऑफ अ क्राइसिस सो देर फॉर इन दीज पर्टिकुलर मैटर्स टू अवॉइड दैट ऑल्सो द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट कॉपरेशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो द आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट वी नीड टू पुलिस विद टैलेंट रिसोर्स शेयरिंग विद द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट बोर्ड शुड कम टुगेदर स्क्वाबलिंग डिस्प्यूट्स इरिटेंट्स दे शुड नॉट बी गिवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंस एंड दे शुड बी रिड्यूस्ड मिटिगेटेड मिनिमाइज Fine. That is all about this particular article, and now let's move to the next article. Pashmina shawls have Shahatush guard hair. Say custom officials, say custom officials, all full of counter trades and artisans. Now, what this particular article is talking about, guys? This article is talking about certain reforms that are needed for the Pashmina shawl trade. Fine. Now, by the way, this particular article, guys, we'll see with respect to the prelims examination. prelims examination because the pashmina okay the pashmina pashmina being uh, a textile which has been given the gi tag okay but there are some factual dimensions and then with respect to the mains examination the challenges faced by textile sector the challenges faced by the textile sector gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 and even the gs paper number 1 okay location of industries and the challenges faced by the industries there we can use this particular article now so first of all i have simplified this particular article and in a way of a story we'll understand that what is happening here okay first of all as the pashmina is being discussed so pashmina pashmina it is uh, the, the the pashmina it is a um, uh, a fabric okay pashmina is a fabric by which the shawls are made and these shawls have, are of high quality they are very fine okay and they provide an excellent insulation in the seasons of the winter now this pashmina it is obtained from a variety of goat that is the mountain goat and the name of this goat is capra hircus capra hircus now this capra hircus is found in the uh, the changtang plateau in tibet and they are also found into the parts of ladakh so in the ladakh this capra hircus it is domesticated it is reared and from them the pashmina is obtained now when we talk about the pashmina it is largely uh, the pashmina fabrics pashmina shawls they are made by the unorganized sector okay and the pashmina industry it is providing the livelihood to at least 6 lakh people and the making of the pashmina it is a traditional art and as a part of a traditional heritage the pashmina when uh, the pashmina gets the market these artisans are also getting livelihood and their art is being sustained this is something now this is about the pashmina apart from the pashmina guys there is also one more type of a fabric that is the shahatush now the shahatush it is a fabric which is retrieved from the undercoat fiber undercoat from the tibetan antelope tibetan antelope okay so we got two animals one is the tibetan antelope and other is the uh, capra hircus which is a mountain goat now The, basically these are the tibetan antelope they are called as the chiru and the fabric which is made that is a shahatush fabric which is made from the fiber undercoat of these tibetan antelopes it is also very expensive it is also very fine it is also very high quality but actually what happened actually what happened few years back a uh, few years back shahatush is also highly expensive commodity it gives the warmth however few years back the uh, tibetan antelope they were added in the sites now what is the sites sites stand for convention on international trade in 
endangered species on wild flora and fauna. Now, see this particular thing, the animals who are listed into the sites, their exports, the exports of their body parts, exports of their fur, their horns, etc. is banned. Okay, so this is something that has happened. Now guys, when we talk about the Shehatush, which is derived, derived by the Tibetan antelope and when we talk about Pashmina, fine, they both look very similar. They have the similar physical properties. Differentiation is sometimes very hard. Okay, so what happens? Now see this particular thing, Pashmina. Pashmina, it is exported into the foreign countries, particularly to the Europe or the countries having the temperate climate. There was a few years back 700 crore rupees of Pashmina that was to be exported. Now, this Pashmina export has come down. What is the reason? Understand this particular thing. Now, before, before a trader has to export the Pashmina, they have to go through the mandatory testing of that particular fabric so that it can be known that it doesn't contain the fragments of some banned species. For example, the Tibetan antelope. It's, it is not containing the Shehatush. It is to be ascertained and the scientific tests are to be done. Now, it has been provided that when, the, when these fabrics are being tested, okay, now the technique that is used to test them, it is light microscopy. Okay, and this light microscopy, it is a very old technique and many times it gives the false positives which leads to the wrong prosecution of the Pashmina traders. What is the false positive? Now see, I told you that Pashmina can be exported but the Shehatush which is, which is retrieved from the Tibetan antelope, they, it cannot be exported because it is banned under the sites convention. So but suppose there is a Pashmina shawl. It will be tested under the light microscopy. It will give that actually it is a Shehatush shawl and not a Pashmina. So the false positives are given. Traders say that when that happens, they are booked, then they are arrested, their consignments are seized and this is bringing a lot of miseries for them. Now, the, art uh, the artisans who are making it, it said, said that these consignments are sent to the Wildlife Institute of India, which uses this light microscopy. But in this light microscopy, there is a lot of subjectivity there that is there and it depends on to the extent of the expertise of that examiner. So, they are saying that new technologies, that is the scan, that is the electron microscopic scanning, electron microscopic scanning, it should be used or DNA test rather can be done. DNA test can be done that whether it is of Shaitus or whether it is of Pashmina. This is something that has been provided. Now guys, I told you this particular thing that when we talk about, just a minute, when we talk about the Pashmina, Pashmina, it is a very expensive fabric and it holds a lot of potential for the exporting in India. So it's being provided that exports have significantly dropped. They were around 750 crore around 6 or 7 years back but now the exports are just 100 crore rupees. Why? Because the exporters are not getting the support even many times they are getting booked under them. So therefore there are the reforms that are needed in this particular direction it is being provided. That is all about this particular article guys and now we will move to the next article. <laughs> High number of promotions but lower learning outcome. Now, this particular article we will see with respect to the GS paper number 2, social justice issues related to education. <clears throat> now, basically guys, what this article is talking about? This article is talking about that actually in India, the learning poverty has increased a lot in the past few years. Okay. Now, understand what has happened. First of all guys, first of all guys, the data that we will be seeing here, the data that we will see here, it is from the ASAR Annual Status of Education Report. It is from National Achievement Survey. National Achievement Survey, I hope you can see that. It is from ASAR Annual Status of Education Report. Okay. Fine. It is from National Achievement Survey. And the data, it is also taken from UDISE Plus Report. UDISE Plus Report. So, it was released recently, UDISE Plus, and we have taken it in our newspaper analysis also. Now, what these reports are pointing to, reports are saying this thing, that actually what had happened, actually what had happened in the COVID-19 pandemic, the promotion of the students have done into the secondary schools, okay. Repetition rates has come, has come down a lot. You might be knowing this thing, that the students were passed even without giving the exam in the COVID-19 pandemic. That is something that happened, okay. Now, at the same time, there is inability to attend the physical classes also there. The school had the lack of access to digital education. School cannot provide digital education. People cannot attend the physical classes and then they are just being elevated to the higher classes. 
Now this particular thing had led to the poor learning outcome. Now already even before the pandemic, the annual status of education report that is released by the Pratham NGO, it has provided this particular thing that substantial number of children in the India who are in the class 5, they cannot read the text of the class 2. Okay, that is something that has happened. So the learning poverty, learning gap were already existing in India. And guys, if I tell you, the employability of engineers in India, it has been reducing due to poor quality of education, lack of conceptual understanding. And here I just want to give you an additional data. Please note it down in your notebook. According to the India Skill Report, according to India Skill Report, just around 46% of the graduates are employable. Now, why the majority of other, why they are not employable? Because they don't have conceptual understanding knowledge gaps are there poverty gaps are there okay and now when we are promoting the students these poor knowledge gaps will further increase and it will impact the quality of education okay now guys the article for example here the chart number one it is showing the promotion rate so we see that the uh, scheduled tribe scheduled caste obcs generals all the people all the students they have been just promoted without taking the exam Okay, repetition rate at the same time, repetition rate, repetition rate, repetition is when a person, when a student fails, then that student has to repeat that class again. So repetition rate has come down for all ST, SCs, OBCs, generals. That is something that has happened. Okay, now when this particular thing is happening, what it will do, it will lead to the learning losses because you have just been promoted without testing. This is one that thing that is coming. So guys, you can, you can provide this particular uh, dimension in the education related answers okay now moving to the next article level of groundwater extraction lowest in 18 years find the study okay so this particular article will use with respect to the gs paper number three gs paper number one find water resources water resources now you might be knowing this particular thing guys that actually the ground extraction rates in india are very high and because of the groundwater extraction, the water table, they are under recharged. Often they are at the alarming level. In this particular direction, Niti Aayog has also come out with the composite water management index and provide this particular thing. India is facing the water stress. The groundwater tables are very much in a poor condition. Particularly, if I give you the example, the most alarming situation in the northern India, particularly in the Punjab and Haryana. Why? Because after the Green Revolution, Punjab and Haryana, they had switched to the paddy in a very big numbers. Now, when we talk about the paddy crop, it needs a minimum of the 100 centimeter of rain. But in Haryana, Punjab, fine, the maximum rain that comes, okay, or the rain in an average, it ranges from 45 to 50 centimeter. But they need at least 100 centimeter of rain. So, water is being drawn from the well pond uh, the, the water is being drawn from the ground by the help of the tube wells so in the condition the condition in punjab and haryana is even very bad okay so but however now there is a positive thing that is coming so recently what has happened an assessment an assessment has been carried by the center ground water board center ground water board and the ministry of water water resources it has provided this particular thing onto the basis of the central ground water board report that into the 18 years the ground water extraction is at lowest which is a very good thing now they have provided this 2022 assessment provides that ground water extraction is the lowest since 2004 Okay, now they had given the number that okay, how much BCM recharge is there, how much BCM extraction is there, how many units are being taken. Now these microscopic data are neither important nor you will be able to remember it. So you don't need to remember it, just broad trends are something that we need to see. Now what are the reasons that why this groundwater extraction has reduced? So or why the groundwater table is improving? Reason could be increase in the groundwater recharge increase in the groundwater recharge can be because of the increases increase recharge from the canal seepage okay so when the canal is going on from the canal the water is seeping and it is going into the ground so the canal seepage increased by that groundwater also water table is improving return flow of irrigation you put water into the field then that water comes down again into the ground so that is improving fine recharge from water bodies tanks water conservation structures all of them have helped okay so this is something that has been provided so the central ground water board's report can be used can be quoted in your answers so that is all guys about this particular article and with this we come to an end to the today's newspaper analysis guys i hope that you have liked the video and i hope that you are understanding all the concepts
ओके सो दैट इज ऑल फॉर टूडे नाउ विल मीट टूमोरो एंड गाइज If you have liked the video, please do hit the like button as it really takes a lot of hard work to make the videos and the appreciation. If you show, we understand that actually video is helpful to you guys. So actually, it gives us, uh, if it gives us a kind of a validation that it is actually helping you. Fine. So thank you and please leave your lovely comments. They are they actually help us a lot in further further. Uh, it it helps us to keep on going. Thank you so much.